The real-life Patriots may have had their season added on Sunday by Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos, but that does not stop us from starting off our Madden NFL 25 owner mode here on the PlayStation 4 with the New England Patriots, but without Tom Brady or Bill Belichick. Now, I had to play this out a little bit differently than I planned to. If you guys watched my original video discussing whether or not I wanted to do an owner mode, I talked about having Brady and Belichick try to retire at the end of the first season. However, that was not really controllable, so what I had to do was actually release Brady from the roster before we even started this. He's actually in the free agent pool with his ratings all the way down at zero. The reason I did this is so that his contract would not count against the cap if I tried to release him. So this way we have all the cap room as if he retired. And we're going to be replacing head coach Bill Belichick with his son, a current assistant on the Patriots, former Rutgers football player Steven Belichick. So Steven Belichick will take over the New England Patriots from his father and try to bring them back to the top of the NFL as they once were under his father, Bill Belichick. With Tom Brady gone, that will be a tall task, but we're going to be looking to build around the team that he has with him right now. We have some good young players all around the team, I think. A good defense already, some pieces on offense, and I think it's a team that obviously could use some work without Tom Brady or Bill Belichick, but it's a team that I like moving forward. So here we go, you can take a look at the settings that I'm playing on right now, and you can also take a look at the sliders I'm going to be playing on, X Charter 04s. The only thing different between his, and I actually might bump this, is he plays on 15 minute quarters. I might look with that, I'm not really too sure. I might play the first game on 15 minute quarters and go from there. But we are ready to start the offline league. So in this episode, we're going to be simulating all of season one. The next episode, which I'll have out tomorrow, will be getting into the offseason, making some moves. But first things first, we have a trade before the first preseason game. I'm trading Stephen Ridley to the Atlanta Falcons for a third round pick. I didn't really want Stephen Ridley. I just figured I would move forward with LeGarrette Blunt as my plan for the future at halfback, as well as Shane Vereen being the change of pace back and the third down back, as well as Brandon Bolden can be a nice backup. But here is a sped up version of me going through my depth chart. I think I set it up so that for mo for the most part, like there were, like they had all the realistic ones in terms of they were accurate as to what the Patriots have been doing in real life. So anyway, um, that's pretty much that. But you can see a sped up version of this, and then later in the preseason, we're gonna get into our cuts, and we do have to cut down the roster a little bit. So first off, I'm cutting this crazy quarterback that I do use to offset uh, releasing Brady. Don't worry about that. Cutting Austin Colley, we're going to cut long snapper Danny Aiken as well as DJ Williams. And we're going to go to the offensive line. We're going to cut Braxton Cave, Rakave, Mark Zuvzevic. I don't know how to pronounce that. Also going to cut Joe Volano and Chris Jones. And then moving into the linebacking core, we're going to cut Jagarit Davis, Justin Green, Canoris Davis. And I think that would be it. So here we go, getting into the simulation part of this. You can see we're just advancing through every week, not bothering practicing or progressing players or scouting or anything like that. I'm not worried about that right now. And you can see we've had a rough start to the season, 0-5 in this matchup against the New Orleans Saints, who are 4-1. We're going to come out of this with our first one of the season, though, picking up a nice win against the Saints, going up against the Jets. But here we go. You can take a look at the draft stories, and these are very important to keep track of. The draft stories will give you really good insight on who to look for in the draft, in the upcoming draft from their draft class. So here we go. The guys I want you to focus in on are quarterback Pop Warren and wide receiver Shady Monroe. Monroe is a six foot eight beast. He's a big play guy. He's been compared to Calvin Johnson. Blake Pop Warren is a 36-year-old quarterback making a run at the Heisman at TCU, 36 years old. But here we go. We're going to deal Brandon Spikes to the Colts for a third-round pick. Spikes is an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. I didn't plan on bringing him back. I know I figured to get some value for him as I could or while I could. And we're going to deal Adrian Wilson to the Ravens for a fourth-round pick. Adrian Wilson did not have a lot of trade value being as old as he is. But uh, Adrian Wilson's guy I probably would have cut if I couldn't end up trying to get a deal for him. So we just move him. You can see we're going to sign Taiwan Jones, former Oakland Raider, and former New England Patriot Nico Kot Kutavide. I've never, I never learned how to pronounce his name. But here's the story of Brandon Spikes getting traded to the Indianapolis Colts. Many were shocked. I was not... Spikes was placed on IR before the AFC Championship game, or before the AFC Divisional game, I believe, actually, and that kind of fell out of favor with the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick, but here we go, more simulating, as everyone likes to see, we're going to move up a couple weeks here, get into our bye week, and here's some updates on the draft stories, quarterback Pop Warren, wide receiver Shady Monroe continue to stand out, as well as running back Akeem Okongwo, who is setting some records over there at Lehigh. And here's the kicker, Doug Blute, who's kicked a 70-yarder before, and has actually attempted a 73-yarder before. And it's actually filling in as the back quarterback at, I believe, Eastern Michigan. So, interesting storyline going on there for kicker Doug Blute. 
But nonetheless, back to the simulating, of course, going up against the Denver Broncos, we're going to end up losing that one. We fall to 2-9, and nine, going up against the Houston Texans there, 6-5. and five. We're going to end up losing once again, so we're 2-10 at this point. But here we go, more draft stories, and here you can see Demarcus Singleton has emerged a little bit. He is a very fast player out of Canada, not sure if he's going to go to college or come out in the draft yet. And you can see Pop Warren wins the Heisman. He was seven years older than Chris Winkie when he did it. Winkie was previously the oldest person to win the Heisman. But you can see Akeem Okongwa also still doing well. Here it's time to negotiate some contracts. Rob Ninkovich, we're going to offer him preliminarily a three-year, and I believe four. We're going to go to $3 million. It looks like fully unguaranteed. And now you can see we have Ryan Wendell. And I'm just going to end negotiations with him. He kind of wanted too much money for a guy of his caliber, I thought. So I just decided to move on. You see we're simulating once again, and then DeMarcus Singleton commits to Florida, so it looks like he will not be coming out for the NFL draft. You can see here, oh, that's too bad, he's a big, fast guy. Um, you know, I don't know if he would be like a star wide receiver, but I think he could be used using his specialties. When you have a guy that fast, you can probably find some sort of spot for him. I think that would be huge, but nonetheless, um, we can take a look at some of the other draft stories. And you can see here, Silver Saliga. We're going to try and end up resigning him. I feel like I mispronounce his name all the time, but give him some money. I like him as a backup. I think he played really well for the Patriots this year. He's not too highly rated in the game, but nonetheless, advancing through the playoffs, you can see the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl, and their Super Bowl is going to be the Broncos versus the 49ers. So almost what it was in real life. Real life is obviously the Broncos and the Seahawks, but close enough. And you can see Shady Monroe suffers a concussion while dunking in a streetball tournament. And the story with him is he is the son of streetball legend Stretch Monroe. So he's a big basketball player. But anyway, as we get to the end of the year, he is a, here is a very, very sped up version of me scouting a bunch of these players, including Shady Monroe, Pop Warren, Demarcus Singleton, Doug Blute. Doug Blute was a little bit disappointed in his, uh, his kick power was only a 92. I thought it would be like a 99, but so... I don't know if we're going to look to draft him. Priest Bergeron we're looking at here, as well as a couple other guys. Um, Al Grennan Kiodum is the projected number one overall pick. He is very fast like a quarter, or not fast like, but like probably a fast development quarterback. And Blake Vasquez is another guy I was looking at. But here we go, you can take a look at some of the end of the year storylines. Andy Reid ends up getting fired by Kansas City and then rehired by Washington. And you can see here it's Akio Spikes. Does retire, ending his career with the Tennessee Titans. And you can see Matt Castle is also testing for agency, some other storylines. But nonetheless, in the next episode, we're going to get into the offseason, looking to make some moves. I don't want to go into, like, full rebuild mode with this team. You know, this year was bad enough as it is. I want next year to be able to kind of get back into com com competitiveness. Excuse me, I don't know why that was hard to say. But, um, yeah, I would really like to kind of become a competitive team again next year and maybe make a run to the playoff spot, at least go 500 or something like that. So... Nonetheless, that's the goal next year, and that is what we will try to, you know, do in the offseason. Try to get some good players. I'm not like I said, I'm not looking to make this a drawn-out rebuilding process. But nonetheless, that's pretty much going to do it for me. We're going to head into the offseason in the next episode. In the next episode, thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. So, I'm out. Peace.